episode of Axiom TV. I'm your host, Jason B. Human. Today we have on with us Pill Eater. Hey, what's up, Jason? How's it going? What's going on? <laughs> uh, Pill Eater has come up with a philosophy called Asian Arianism, and he's going to expound on it a little bit with us today and share it with us. Um, Pill Eater, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, how, why you go by that name and where you're from? Well, first off, uh, Jason, uh, thank for having, thank you for having me on. I was looking at your channel, and I think you're you're onto something with that. And you've been had other guests on the, your show previously. I mean, um, uh, you know, it all starts. I do the same thing on my channel, YouTube.com/slash Pill Eater. I just get a bunch of guests, and we just talk about whatever. But the main subject to talk about is, I guess, you know, Asian Arianism. www.asianarianism.com. And so, um, previously, you had on your show. A guy named Lucas. He has. Um, he was on the. Um, I don't know. He talked to Jared Taylor. Uh, he's one of those white racialist types, whatever. But at the same time, you know, wait. He has an Asian wife. He also has a YouTube uh, channel, you know, and he has some videos where he's like, "Well, this is my Eurasian kids." Uh, that totally means I'm not racist. And uh, but the, 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 the point is the the interesting point is that you know Lucas. Um, he's got himself Eurasian kids, and this is quite a common thing that I've seen through our generation is um, I myself come from a Eurasian background. My grandma's Japanese, so I'm, I guess I'm Quartzy's Japanese, you know, and I went to college originally for Asian studies. And so yet at the same time, we're also being um, introduced on the internet through, I guess, the alt-right philosophy or the death of postmodernism and the introduction of the internet world. And this is very anti-liberal establishment theories and philosophy. And that opens up a whole can of worms such as race, uh, sexuality, and this, you know, it's a taboo subject. We have in reality everything from terrible SJW stuff to, you know, race riots and, you know, the Antifa or something like that. But what Asian Arianism really is all about is a clever observation that I've came in, in a whimsical term, right, Arianism. I'm talking about a master race and Asian Arianism. I'm not saying that there's a unique uh, background to it. But um, what I'm saying is pretty much in the 1980s, you know, and maybe 60s, there was this foist upon ideal about multiculturalism and diversity. And that this um, ideal basically told white Americans that they were enriched with, you know, stuff from around the world. And what really has happened pretty much in that Reaganomic era is that everyone was an autonomized individual. The white women were in the labor market or, you know, the market, the job work. And so everything became weary, balanced, and um, people were now, I guess, individuals in the white world. And so what's happened is you saw the destruction of family. I think white men basically want to restable themselves as family men. And so because white women failed that because of feminism, you know, they're too broody and bitchy, white men found Asian women to basically have their children with. And you see a lot of people in the Gen X generation and the white middle, upper middle classes all now settling down with Asian wives. And they're all now having Eurasian kids that are probably like eight to seven years old or maybe somewhat, some are millennials, maybe like roaming millennial. She herself is Chinese with a little white Irish in her comes from my same, not, not except I'm more on the Japanese end, but um, there is this unique um, Eurasian thing that's happening and no one, the bad, worst the part is no one's talking about it. We hear a lot of talk of white nationalists talking about Richard Spencer's uh, future white ethno state, but uh, nobody's really talking about, well, what do you do with mixed race people? Do you give them amnesty and say, um, well, immediately you're white. You don't need to be on your Asian side. But according to hardcore white nationalists, you're still a degenerate if you have mixed race blood in you. Or basically, is there a third position? And, I, and that's basically what I argue about is maybe there is this unique third position that's both that, you know, white and Asian that has this pan mix and maybe mediums kind of like back in the old school 90s for magazines like Giant Robot magazine, which totally flirted with the ideals. As long as uh, juxtaposed magazine. We're also seeing a lot of um, graphic novels and comic books, kind of like Putona, about this kind of wamafel, white male, Asian female thing. That just reoccurs. And this is a very popular West Coast thing. It's just reoccurring in medium. And it's just something to study and nobody's really talking about because if you point the elephant in the room, you pretty much, um, 
you know, you're, you're called a racist or you're called, you know, insensitive. But I think this, it's time to point the elephant in the room. and It's time to declare certain people to have alliances towards things. And I think there is a kind of this weird punk soap culture called Asian Arianism. It's been happening the past 20 years. Um, that basically is, they're just guys, white guys with what Asian girlfriends that go to punk rock shows, art galleries, vegan restaurants, nerd conventions, and as well vice versa with Asian male and white female. This is not just white male, Asian female. It comes from both sides of the spectrum. Hardly anything is written about it. Um, I think the only really, pr there are many different artists in the background of that, but I, I think it just needs to be uncovering, and that's what I've been doing on my blogging, on my website, asianareas.com. And what I've just been flirting about on my YouTube channel. So, yeah, a lot of this is coming together, but, um, I mean, I try to artly, uh, artistically express myself uh, for self-promotion through two books. I have uh, two books. One is Trip, uh, like two novellas, and one is Almanized Baby Face, which is just cut-up avant-garde stuff. They're both on Lulu, by the way. And uh, they're pretty in both good conditions, but um, some of my writing's in there, and I elaborate upon Asian Aryan idealism through avant-garde art. And so that's really what I can say about it, um, about the whole Asian Aryan experiment, what I'm doing on the internet. Those You wrote those two books, you're saying? Yes, yes I wrote these two books. Um, they're about uh, 50,000, 55,000 pages long. Uh, so this is short stories. Trip is more into a novella. It's, it's two novellas, but it's in the okay. book format, start to finish. I would suggest Trip. This one seems to have the appraisal pages. This is more just stuff I wrote as a teenager. This is more uh, within the past few months. Trip. And so I think they're both good companions. They're on Lulu and on my main website. They're easy to find. I as well made music during my young time. Um, I added a band camp, trashcore.bandcamp.com. I just recently put up and uh, that's on www.asianarianism.com. So it works as also a resume for myself. I mean, it is a one man project, but there are other people. I've set up a discord server. Who know what I'm talking about? Um, there's this one girl by the name of uh, Asian God, um, Asian girl for white God. I've been talking to her on um, Skype or whatever. She she pretty much agrees what I have to say, you know. Too. I'm just a little more radical with calling it Aryan. I know it ticks off a lot of people when you say Aryan because it means some master race, but it's playful. It's very whimsical and it gets an edgy punk thing across. And it's just like kind of in the tradition of um, another good book and one of my favorites. Uh, Answer Me by Jim Goad. Uh, back in the 90s, there was a very offensive shock art magazine called uh, Answer Me. And this basically was um, for confrontational zines from everything from uh, violence to sexual activity of just uh, ticking off people. And I, I, I think this is a big influence on my thinking. And it takes a certain type of person to like this. And it's a very avant-garde culture. Uh, I think I want to try to come from that tradition. But more on the Asian flair side, I mean. Once again, I said Giant Robot, Juxtapose Magazine, or Amped Asia. I love what Amped Asia is doing, but um, fun stuff like that. It's a super niche thing, and I really i am trying to do the aesthetics on my own, and it's really hard, so it just acts as a portfolio of myself. So, yeah, Asian Aaron is not okay, okay, so you said, uh, you said Aaron, Asian Aaron .com is a single one-man project? It's me, and there's another friend, uh, Ugrin, who's basically a webmaster. He made, I have to give him props for that. He made the new website, and um, he's, he's responsible for webmastering it on WordPress. And I, before then, I had a Tumblr, and he really made the thing going. So I have to rig respect. He does postings, too. I'd love to do a podcast with him, but he's always too scared, and he's a seclusive guy. I love the guy, uh, Ugrin. He's on the website as well. But there are other friends that help me out, and uh, I can name from Jitaro, um, Bass Korean, you know, John Curley. I, I can go on, I can be very personal, but I have a whole connection. I mean, one of the okay. most important things, too, is um, I really started this because I was a co-host on The Stark Truth with Robert Stark. Uh, Robert Stark um, is a journalist, often through the alt-right circles and beyond. He originally starred on the Voice of Reason radio network back in the early 2000s, like 2010. Voice of Reason was kind of that old, old right philosophy of the fringy white nationalist type. Robert was just doing it because he had nothing else to do, but he since then branched out and got more experimental and avant-garde. And I was listening to Voice of Reason when I was young, finding out about, you know, Greg Johnson through that, the whole countercurrents thing. And uh, I've been actually a fan of countercurrents myself, but... Um, 
uh, www.starktruthradio.com. I'm a co-host there, and we just get on interesting guests from the arts to whatever, and uh, often we'll flirt with weird ideologies. I'll re-upload them on my uh, YouTube channel at some times, but um, I also take pride in the, the Stark Truth Show with Robert Stark, as that's a very uh, foundational podcast for a lot of okay. things. Yeah, I've checked out the uh, the Stark Truth and uh, Arian it. Aryan, Asian, AsianArianism.com, uh, quite impressive uh, the amount of content that you have uh, on there as well as the visuals. And when it comes to the stark truth, um, yeah, that, that, that's pretty um, clear in um, the interviews that you have on there. There's a lot of interviews on there. Right. Now, um, I want to, because you've said a lot there, I want to unpack what you uh what you had to say. Um, you're not from the alt-right, right? Well, um, I'm originally, I guess you could say I was an art student, but I'm not going to lie to myself. When I was a, um, you know, when I was early, I was from a very artsy background. You know, I went to art school. My, my mom was an artist. Uh, what, well, I always say this. When I was 15, we used to go to art galleries together as a family. Um, one of my favorite heroes is Tim Biscup. He is okay. kind of his, uh, lowbrow artist from the uh, West Coast. He's kind of older now. Um, but, you know, I, I, when I was 15, I admired art like that. But then I think after being, when I was 16, I was a musician. I, I played, you know, Game Boy music. Chiptune was really big back in the late zeros. But somewhere along the line, as you're saying about the alt-right, I got into very weird, edgy music like White House and Atari Teenage Riot, and uh, things like um, skinhead music. You know, you listen to Screwdriver because it offends people, right? And so right. there was this flirtation of skinhead stuff, being a young white te teenager, skinhead stuff. But then it's like, on the Asian side of the thing, it just, um, I flirted back with it, but I kind of kept it a secret. You know, going back to school for Asian studies, I guess you have this clash of everything together. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I wrote my senior project on the alt-right before it was exploded by Hillary Clinton. It was kind of a, a 55 page document just about the introduction of what is the alt-right. Um, there's a PDF of it. I mean, I should upload it online. I showed it to some friends, but um, I kind of take pride in that because when I presented that senior project in college, well, most of the professors didn't know what I was talking about, but became very more, thanks to Hillary Clinton, it exploded and now it's a household name. But I was doing okay. that two years ago and you know, it kind of, I caught on to something and, um, I mean, it's just something the backup claim, but yeah, I, I would say I was influenced by far right ideologies, but in a playful way, like Boyd Rice and death in June and white house. And I would say I learned more about the white nationalist ethos through, um, countercurrents, American Renaissance, you know, works of Jared Taylor and Greg Johnson. I think they are, they're good foundational things that it's a good, proper understanding of things but i come from a background where it was originally shock art and originally was um interesting stuff um i'm usually just infusing those ethos into uh I, how i see it you know there are some foundational things about um conservative or liberal you might say and i do believe and i guess racial difference is really what it, what it comes boils down to you know j philip rushton's race evolution behavior if you were to subscribe to that I, I guess we know that okay then race is real how do we go forth with it so that's okay. what I'm going to address with as well okay um, um so you say you're a college student I was a college student I Are you, what, did, you, did you graduate I graduated all right so you're an you're an intelligent man I didn't uh, um I think I flunked out of one um the first semester because my too. parents were You're so definitely strict. On debt. I mean, that's the thing I hate about college. And today they're not even letting people in. If you're older than 25, they won't even let you in undergrad college because it's a Disney vacation land. <laughs> All know? right. Um, first, let's go into uh, why did you choose the name P Pill Eater? Well, back in my when I was uh, like 17 or 16, there is a website called You're the Man Now Dog dot com. YTMND dot com. Okay. Uh, it's basically a website. You upload a picture, sound, a text. Completely like a troll website, like something awful. It's like an old school Tumblr website. Um, I was making YTMDs at the time. And so I was making a couple of alt accounts. One of those alt accounts was Pill Eater. It was a joke off the name Ink Drinker. Ink Drinker was another YTMD user. Um, and so I just turned it on name, said Pill Eater. 
And basically, I was uploading Mr. Krabs websites, like, oh, yeah, Mr. Krabs. And there were these memes that were popular on um, YTMND. And through my influence under the Pillinger franchise, um, I was able to popularize the, um, the Mr. Krabs meme. There's a YouTuber by the name of um, Behind the Meme who did a special on Mr. Krabs and cited my YTMD websites as popularizing the, oh yeah, Mr. Krabs fad. So I take another weird esoteric uh, fringe pride in that, uh, being a young teenager and getting okay. out. But ironically though, the name Pill Eater today falls completely in line with the pill memes, taking red pill, blue pill, this pill, that. I had no intentions of naming my ah, gotcha. at the time. And now when I look back at it, I'm like, wow, that was perfect. I founded the name in April the 4th, 2009. And um, now it basically is a name, this pill, that pill. And I just like, well, I'll just take on my YTMD career and bring it along with me. Shows you what I've been doing artistically on the internet. And so, yeah, I just stuck with it. It's just a funny kish name. So, yeah. Okay. So it's not, it has nothing to do with Marilyn Monroe or Elvis. No drug taking. I don't do drugs. All right. I got you. Um, now, you said, um, how old are you? Um, I'm 23. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, you're 23. Um, graduated college. Yeah. What would you go to college for? Uh, originally, I went for Asian studies, but I graduated out with a uh, double major in English and communications. In, in English, I'm sorry? English and communications. English and communications. All right, so Asian, you, you are, you're immersed in Asian studies you're well versed in Asian studies um, as well as English communications well yeah for about yeah the first two years of my I was at Temple University in their Asian studies programs I was hopping around of different educations around the Pennsylvania area but I did my most of my Asian studies were at community college and Temple so okay and you said where did you grow up at um I'm, I grew up in the Philadelphia area um, right now, I am in the Philadelphia area. I, I live in the, near the Chinatown area. Um, it's it's a very interesting place. I mean, we could be talking about you said that's where you grew up? Yeah, and around my grandma's too. Um, my, my, my grandma would bring me out outside of Pennsylvania, which is it's a very interesting place. I mean, there is a very tight-knit Asian-American community around the area, but... Um, I consider myself more white. That's the thing. And <laughs> that offends a lot of people. Whoa, how can you consider yourself white if you're just quartzy non-white? And it's just like, it's just because it's, 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 it's a very interesting, I never really, I thought of myself, like, yeah, it's cool that you have this background of it, but it's just like, um, I don't go and breathe and think of it. I mean, you could say Asian Arianism is a, a connection of that, but um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 that's what I have to say about that. I think I've lived a pretty normal American life so far. Okay. Um, all right. So you say that in your young, in your youth, when you were a little bit younger, because you're still a young man. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I can't really say about anything. Um, so what attracted you? The skinhead ideology. Well, um, let me think. I think I was, um, I think I was 16. And I remember just watching history channels about skin, like skinheads, like the hammerhead skinheads and like the fringe national socialist movement. I was really into strange literature too when I was 15 or 16. I, I read very odd books. One of those odd books I really liked was William Pierce's The Turner Diaries. It's still to this day a pretty evil book about murdering and making this white utopia. But it's a pretty violent book and really doesn't have any morals in it. And so I was just discovering, and my big question was, hmm, well, why are these people full of hate, and why do these people do these things? And so just looking out some of the old school skinhead music, like Rock Against Communism, we could be talking about, you know, Screwdriver, No Remorse, uh, Brutal Attack, you know, Bound for Glory, these, these kind of, they, they have no relevance in the alt-right, but represent this old school, like, uh, bumfuck old right of just, like, motorcycles, Tom Metzger attitude that was kind of, I, I was fascinated by it, but you know, I, I thought it was just a big um, fuck you to basically all these uh, liberals who basically said Nazi punks fuck off. And I'm like, well, I thought the whole, if you listen to anal cunt, 
and listen to evil metal that basically wants to kill people. I just, why would you find it offensive for someone to have a value of bleeding supreme? And so, you know, it's an evil war. But, you know, being young and learning stuff from Christian Landers, stuff white people like, and just not understanding the liberal politics of then, I think I was more associated, I still would consider myself not really a, a, I was just flirtation with the skinhead thing. I would, if I had any definition or label, probably when I was 17 or 18, I would be considered a very niche digital hardcore person. My favorite band was Vialicide, and uh, I liked Atari Teenage Riot. I just didn't like the whole anti-Nazi thing. <laughs> I, you know, I liked the ideal of drum machines and computer electronics and blaring and grindcore, like, and scream. It's a very niche thing, digital hardcore. It's just, it's, is it European or is it this? I think digital hardcore is making a comeback with all this electronic stuff, like 10 Tricks Point Never. I think it's a very Asian area thing, digital hardcore. It's just not... It's just too niche and nobody gives a shit. And so, and that's, that's, and if I was to make, if I was to make a new music, I, I think maybe I'll try a digital hardcore thing. I don't know. So yeah, that's okay. what I have to say about the skinhead thing. It's just a flirtation. Okay. Um, are you, are you, are you religious? Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I go to church every, um, Sunday. I mean, I try to go to church every Sunday. I um, like, were you made to do that or I, you know, were you brought up in that or you know, family, something new? In the family, they tell me to go to church every Sunday, but then you know I'll, I'll you know meet somebody there at church. Maybe I have a relationship, a girlfriend, you know, to attend at church. So um, that's why I go for it. But sometimes I won't be able to make it. But I like the ideal of um, feeling, you know, because Christianity is a good message. Um, personally, um, I think there's a lot of things to learn from Christianity. A lot of people say, well, it's a uh, Judaism 2.0 so why does it matter and it's like no Christianity has a lot of great messages from um, uh, the best Christian message I would um, recommend is a man named Ronnie Martin he has a band called Joy Electric uh, he has a sermon at a church in Ashland um, Church in Ohio he's really into weird electronic music but he's the best pastor I would say for an argument for a very esoteric or new kind of Christianity that is good and um, I, I think I've learned a lot about the foundational Christianities through Roddy Martin. So um, I, I think of it as a hero. We had him on the Stark Troop. So, yeah, I, I would say okay. that he is not. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we, we, uh, we, don't have, we only have so much time, so we got a lot to get through. Because there's a lot to unpack in what, in what you said uh, with your philosophy. And I want to be able to uh, question you about it. Because you wrote two books, um, novellas. If I, I I remember correctly, yeah, um, that you that you state that um that has to deal with your concepts on Asian uh, area uh -huh. and how white males are bonding with Asian women and uh, how Asian women are also doing vice versa, yeah, with white males. It's also um, with Asian male, yeah, with white females as well. Uh, oh, okay. Yes, yeah, so with the white females, Asian males with white females. Um, when you, all right, so you're a college student. You're you're a college graduate for English communications. Did a lot of stuff. Grew up in Philadelphia. Um, also, at first started off doing Asian Aryan studies and studying, and it was in Philadelphia, and I. Was this area that wasn't your grandma's? Was it um, in the suburbs or right there in the city of Philly? Um, I have a family that lives. We have a place in the city, but we are, were outside the city. So I would say the suburbs. I would say we're in the, the suburbs. Okay. But sometimes we have a place within the city. Like my brother might have a place in the city to live in. So. All right. Um, do you uh, do you believe that your our desires truth in life i believe in authenticity and i think that if you if someone is authentic with one's life they can come close to the truth i think we live in a society where people are inauthentic and they basically make lies in order to justify their existence but ultimately they have diagnoses and um, terrible uh, hypocrisies because they're living an inauthentic life if people were to be authentic and tell truths or do things by word of value then we can live in better lives i mean it's the reason why most um 
most college professors are corrupt because they are basically doing it to make a living. They are using the free market. Everyone has to act as an agent in free market capitalism to make their living. And so they have to make petty lies and basically exploit people in order to get a living. If okay. really we're true, we had to live an authentic existence and not harm anything. But we're seeing these people who say one thing about, oh, wasn't it great, the discipline of English studies, and then you're just selling McDonald's cheeseburgers and lying to people and prosodotizing. That's what created the special snowflake in SJW culture is really free market capitalism, I think. Okay. Um, so you believe that your beliefs should be based in truth. You believe that everyone should be pursuing truth and everything should be honest and everything, including well, yourself. Everything should be your beliefs and everything that we all do should be based and truth and sincerity is that fair I mean, to say if to live the good life not everyone can do it but to live the good life one has to be authentic with oneself i mean this is something martin heidecker said um art said too but start was negative i don't even i don't even like the french at all but okay no. we're dancing around the word truth so let's go with authentic then um to be authentic with oneself if that is a person that lives in complete delusion does that is, should we should we allow that if that's that now, that I, person being authentic to themselves, that this is funny you're saying this because I, I had a podcast with Robert Stark and one of my favorite psychologists is Eric Erickson. He had something called the psychosocial development of philosophy. And what you're saying about delusion is exactly what Erickson is addressing. This ideal of can you really living an authentic life if you're a delusional person who thinks you're an anime character to an anime nobody is watching. And that is a very interesting uh, philosophy to think about. I, 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 did, I, I do talk about, I, I have a blog piece on my website too, talking about psychosocialism. And uh, uh, no, I, I don't. Uh, did, do, we, do, we really, do we really even need to build a uh, uh, philosophy around that? Do we even need to re build a school of thought around that question? Well, there is a school of thought around it. That's the crazy part. And well, of course, that's for capitalistic reasons. That question very yeah, quickly because yeah. that's a math problem. Yeah, okay. that's an easy math problem. How can someone delusional who thinks that they're authentic be authentic? That's impossible. That's a mathematical impossibility. Hmm. Well, then you're just, it's logic. So I um, I mean that's, that's that's a very logical thing. So I guess um, hmm. I mean I'm not well versed in classical philosophy to tell you well. Uh, this is the sun's real, you know, you know, or something like that. I can say for myself. Oh, you, hold on. Are you saying that you can't, you can't right now tell me exactly right now for sure and for certain, with certainty that the sun is real? Okay. Yeah. I, I think I, the sun is real. Okay. From what my observation is, the sun's real. But some, if you were to be in radical doubt philosophy, some would say, well, uh, the brain in the vat, it seems to be, a, you know, but for all purposes, we you know the sun's real. But for the delusional part, um, a lot of this delusional talk you're talking about seems to be the basis of postmodern thinking, which is basically the French people who uh, basically argued that anything is possible. Everyone's free to do what they want, uh, so as long as everyone re loves some certain values. This is what the Antifa and the anarchist always argue. They always argue that you just don't like me because you have different values than me. You have to understand new values. So if I don't take a bath, and if I have sex with all these people, you have to have new values to accept that. But it's like, no, people draw the line and say you're retarded. <laughs> and so um, I'm not really a fan of uh, philosophy after phenomenology. I find phenomenology as the best Western, Martin Heidecker philosophy as the best in Eastern philosophy. And okay. that's what I find. Now, you've, you've expressed a few gripes. And now I want them before uh, you, your 50 minutes that you... Uh, I've allotted away for us. Um, is over. Now you say that uh, you said that um, you are you you're into music. It's it's and it's a certain type of music that you're into. And since you were a teenager, you were attracted to the skinheads. Then you kind of like dismissed it a little bit and said it was a fad. Um, you said that you went to a music more musical kind of thing and then you said that you're religious as well but you recommended to me you made specifically rec you made specific rec uh, recommendation of a pastor that's uh eclectic yeah, somehow. 
uh, and collect clients client somehow. And then you also said that though you're not an official member, you have, have um, at least alt right um, kind of mentality, kind of uh, phil phil uh, philosophical view of the world or of society. Yeah, this idea Is that of philosophy, exactly. It's the death of postmodernism and the belief of the new start for wisdom on the internet and the creation of something new. That's what I'm really talking about. Okay. Terrible right. intersectionality. That just doesn't have to work. We have All to right. get off the Derrida game now. Okay. From what I see from the first three things, from the first thing you to tell me about the uh, being a part of the skinheads, um, the uh, Asian Aryanism being Cortes, I think is the word you use, yeah, Cortes. Chinese or Pan, um, and uh, now being somewhat all right. Those three things tell me a need for belonging on based on identity. Yeah. For identity. And this is you reassuring yourself of your identity by joining these extreme versions of groups. Listen to the books you tell me you've read and the philosophies you tell me you've read. My friend, are you practicing to be a serial killer? Like, what is going on right there? No, 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 no. But, uh, let me show you something. Let me, let me, um, that's funny you say that. Um, like, are you killing uh, cats in the backyard? Uh, no, I'm, I'm just an avant garde kind of guy. It's funny you mentioned that. I would recommend The Gates of Janus by Ian Brady. Um, Ian Brady, you know, one of the more murderers. That was just by Feral House, Adam Parfrey. Um, uh, this is a really interesting stuff, thinking that you're about serial killers. It's not that so much I want to be a serial killer. It's the ideal, the classical liberal thought is supposedly every liberal thought is supposed to enter your mind. And supposedly there comes a stop, a halting stop, when you get in bad shit like serial killer manifestos, child pornography, fan fiction, neo-Nazism, whatever. People just have a halting stop. Answer Me by Jim Goad tested the normal reader's um, thing about that. I mean, you could call it shock art, gross out stuff, whatever. But the no. point of the matter is I'm, tr I'm an artist, and I'm trying to understand different avenues of thought. That doesn't mean I'm a serial killer. It just means it's a... Uh, this is what trolls do. Trolls on the internet adopt the alt-right because it's the best method to go against the anti-liberal establishment. Show some swastikas and sell how much you hate Jews. It's a nice way of offending people. Okay. Um, so, all right. Remember, all right. Let's go. At, you also said you have, like, an issue with women. Feminism, feminist. Basically. White women. White women. Yeah. White women. White women and feminism, I do. All right. Um, all right, let's unpack all of this. Um, so basically, you, you're basing your identity in life on being white. Not, no, Is that not correct? really. I don't see myself as white. I, I, I mean, I see myself. How can you be a, how can you be a, a skinhead? <laughs> um, I mean, I, I and get a, yeah, pan something, but I know what you're saying. I mean, yeah, it's this, you want, like you said, belonging, identity politics. I mean, I don't think of myself who goes, oh, I'm a white man. There's this perversion on the all right. I call it the, the Air, Andy Nowicki calls it the Aryan girl in the wheat field. Basically means you have these crazy white nationalist types saying, oh, my uh, white girl in the field with blonde hair and blue eyes. She is a majestic beauty that's not race mixing. It's almost a perversion in itself. And like, I don't mean to say I'm some kind of obnoxious white liberal that denies white racial consciousness, because that's what all whites do, by the way. I, um, I know I'm, have, I, I'm mostly a European background, and um, I'm unapologetic about it. But do I consider myself white as in like this big evil white? Not, not really. I consider myself some kind of pan uh, quartzy Asian American kid that's just looking, and I'm probably a bigger in the Petri dish of a lot of things. So, yeah. All right. You know what? How you just answered that question just said a lot. <laughs> Notice when you said I'm mostly a European background and I'm all unap unapologetic about it. You were very, you know what I mean, Captain Jack Sparrow about that. And then when you mentioned the pan uh, Asian background, you went very somber. That was very telling. I, I, you got to excuse me. I'm a body language nerd. But anyway. Let's go into let's go into you being unapologetic about being European because apparently that's a that's a, a, a um, that's a, a basis of pride for you. That seems to be a centralized part. You made that a centralized part of your being. 
So, yeah. and you remember, you're an intelligent guy who's graduated college, right? But here's the here's the I don't I really hate the Western Plato Socrates pride. I did a podcast about it. There's this strange nationalism. Like the perversion of nationalism for whites is they seem to connect themselves with all these great figures of the past, from Socrates to Plato to fucking Shakespeare. I don't do that at all. I do not do that at all. I think I'm just some guy in a new world with different genetics. Um, you know, I, some you know there are, there are different classes of white people. I think it's the upper middle class white people who believe in an aristocracy and they believe that. But then they get fooled because the true fact is the upper class, the aristocracy, the real aristocracy is decadent. There is no such thing. I'm just reciting Paul Fussell's class, by the way. This is what he argues. But, you know, it's this, I, I don't think of myself as taking pride of, you know, that, that white person over there, he's probably like me. Chances are he's not. There is a civil war with white people between, since the French Revolution between the spiritual left wing and right wing people. This is an Evolian thing of the white hand and uh, dark hand path. So um, n there are, like I said, the only really whites I kind of agree with are the Asian Aryan type of whites or the eccentric whites that are willing to understand, you know, that that's kind of my uh, likings. There's, there's a lot of things to not like in this world. And one of them is white women. All right. Let's, um, let's, let's, let's go with identity. We're still focused on identity here because regardless whether we like it or not, you've just exhibited and displayed and demonstrated that it is with your European side that you identify with most. From By your own very own words, you said that. You're unapologetic about that. Mm -hmm. All right, you're 75%. So let's, let's focus on that. Remember, because Asians don't have a gang called the skinheads. Uh, uh, do we agree on that? Yeah, they, they don't really, yeah. And the Asians don't have a gang called the alt-right. Do no. we agree on that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, not really. Okay, so, we, uh, so now we, we, uh, we established now that you identify yourself as an Aryan. Huh. That's 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 uh that's very interesting. I uh, never thought of myself as an Aryan. I think of myself as an artist. Uh, I don't think I'm a master. I don't think an Aryan. My friend, what, what did we just? <laughs> I don't think I would say <laughs> the clothes. I, I think I'm some kind of a Asian. I would say I'm an Asian Aryan, but saying just Aryan, maybe in a classifications of groups of Aryans, uh, that's a very clever thing I have to think about. So I don't know. Is that a clever thing that needs to be thought about? This is why I say I'm the smartest man on the planet. All right, this is here. The people can't defend their own beliefs. Suppose that. You just said that you believe things and they should be based in truth. Everyone should be trying to go closer to truth. I'm trying to come closer to truth. I have just exposed the fact that you identify yourself as Aryan because the skinheads do not say, okay, we are open to anyone that is part um, Asian. Do, do they? All right, please help me out with that one. I don't, I don't. Have I don't the rules so. slackened since I joined? I No, I, the only, I think there's a lot of skinheads that like being gay, like Nikki Crane and stuff like that and Jack Donovan, but I don't, yeah, I don't know about the Asian skinhead stuff. So. Okay, so let's get, so now do, 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 do we, have we finally established that you consider yourself white when it's convenient? Let's put it like that then. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. All right, now back to identity politics. Now, the very fact that a person has to base their self-esteem or core, their tesseract of thought and uh, confidence to face life in their identity, something that th they did not earn, something that they did that had no uh, choice in, that they were completely involuntary on, you were not, um, you had, it was involuntary where you were born, to who you were born to, what pigment you would be. I mean, so why, why should one base their whole life and deserve some form of artificial, um, based on something they did not merit? Yeah, Even that's no, Napoleon, a white man. I see, I agree with you. Started on. meritocracy for a reason. So, why are we basing things based on something that nature gave nature gave basically just handed out to everybody 
Uh, well, I agree with you the part about, yeah, you just said, why should you be handed? And I've just said, there are crazy fucking delusional white people that think they're the hairs of fucking Plato, Socrates, Shakespeare. And I call them out on it. That's pretty much every 100% stupid white kid attending a private girls college somewhere out in the College on the Hills, Don DeLillo style. But, you know, I, I um, for the nature part, I have to say that, you know, if you subscribe to American Renaissance and Jared Taylor and the bell curve and innate racial things, you're going to come to the conclusion that race is different, that people have different autonomy in their body. What socials? I'm glad you just said that. And I'm glad you just said that. So that means that you believe that whites are more intelligent than blacks. Do you think that you're smarter than me, Pilly? I don't think so. I don't think so. Because I'd like to prove that right now. Do you think that you're smarter than me? I'm black. No, I don't think I'm think, not a college graduate. I, I probably have a high record. On, I don't know about. Oh God, I flunked out my first semester. You're probably you probably are smarter than me. If we do an I, I'm pretty sure you might have a higher IQ. I, and I don't need an IQ test. I, I believe that's a, a an artificial and um, debunked way of proving that you're intelligent. If anything, it just shows that you're a high yeah. level conformist. Uh, it's that's not so much IQ that test proves that you're a high level conformist is intelligent. It's Remember me for saying that. It's a, it's a group thing, right? When groups of whites and groups of Asians get together and groups of black, they have different outputs towards their way of living. And that is, um, we could get into the whole what is superior, what is inferior, but that's a favorite word to say that, all right, if you believe in race difference, it obviously means you're superior and therefore that's inferior. There's some uh, really crazy Stalinist people out there that say, well, if they're superior, we're going to just have to gas the inferiors. No, no, no. That's, that's, I believe in, like, again, phenomenology, the ideal that people live in natural ways with nature. And that includes, you know, the way of how you're, you're better. In. And that doesn't necessarily mean, well, just because you have a low IQ, that means you can't do things. No, you can do whatever you want. You could still be a great mom if you have a low IQ. And, you know, there is no, um, it's just a thing. It's all about opportunity. Well, no. I'm not going to, I can't agree with you there. I, I do believe we need to get rid of the low IQ people. <laughs> they are an impediment. They well, are an impediment in the uh, progress of human society. Uh, and if well, they are given absolutely no power well, over the decisions in, in, over the decisions in society, then yes, they can have free reign, but they can't be allowed to multiply. Their influence can't, can't be allowed to be spread. I, I, I mean, I'm not, once I've had a talk with a friend and another thing, I'm very, uh, believe it or not, I'm a liberal at heart, but uh, uh, no, I'm, it's yeah, liberal at heart, but conservative in action. And uh, I'm actually quite merciful to a lot of people who's, um, you know, I don't think the Bushmen of Africa, they might have a low IQ, but I don't think they need to be eliminated. No, they, I think their, their benefit is living around that area and they provide a human biodiversity that's a, uh, special i think people have their own right to self-determination and uh this just brings up the ideal about natural world and about um people belong in their own i guess discord servers right what's happening is people are creating bubbles in reality and the death of postmodernism will begin with discord servers from the internet becoming irl in real life where going over someone's house is like entering a new universe and that is a very interesting uh plot what's going to happen and it's kind of scary if you can think of some Blade Runner universe where we're in some cesspool of the hive mind towers. I don't know if that's going to be the future, but it seems to me with everything what we have in our capitalist market to people's strange ide ideals from anti-fascist furries to uh, esoteric board game players, you might have some kind of strange uh, cultures like that. And that, that makes me worried about some bit about our, our future, but um, I don't know. I, I think right. it's realistic. <laughs> this is, this is the part that, this is the part where, that has me worried in your beliefs and anyone who believes even close to any, anything like what you believe. Um, are we not, are we not in a white um, control world? Do, does the Western powers not majority, majority dominate the world? human society it springs we up, agree on that yeah yeah i, I mean i agree, totally agree that it's you know there's a right. wise power right. so that's the western world okay yeah. so for the for the skinheads for the kkk for the disenfranchised whites for all those type of groups the all right included the american renaissance etc for them to start their to base their entire politics their, their entire platform 
their program based on the foundational rubric being identity when their problem is with other white people mm -hmm. do you not see how like yeah, I don't know. That, that, is that seems unintelligent to me. Yeah, yeah, it you're absolutely right. With the problem. Did you know about the classic Greg Johnson versus Richard Spencer philosophy? It's basically these white nationalist types. Do they argue for a, a European imperium or European ethnostates? And that's the ideal. Does should all white people around the world be united through one white identity, or should there be a, an Irish place, a German place, a Scottish place? That is currently a conflict right now in the alt-right white nationalist circle, and has complete a huge division. And I think that will be the well, collapse of the alt-right, pretty much. Well, the, well this is my this is my issue right here, Pillier. Is I don't understand why any of the, these organizations start their argument first by um, endorsing or uh, flying um, emblems from the past of groups of whites that lost and <laughs> lost terribly, uh, that being the Nazi symbol of the swastika and the Confederate flag, that to me is self-defeating mentally to represent a loser. Daily, the daily um, story also it. playing a form of victimhood in my mind. Yeah, it's um, a morphing thing. That's it. Um, hold on, I'll, I'll finish and then you can counter back on it. Um, that part said. Also, it's crazy to me that these groups also come out by singling out um, groups of other races that they're not uh, that they have issues with, such as the refugees or the immigrants or the um, blacks like Black Lives Matter or Colin Kaepernick, when who is the, or even women with feminism, when who has made these issues? Who has caused these issues to happen? Has there been like has there been a group of black people that took over con Congress that I haven't been told about? Um, at what point does any of these groups man up, turn around and inject some like steroids in their balls and turn around to the people that's actually causing the problem? stop hiding behind because when you when Great. you show up as your foundation as white identity as your foundation when your problem is with another white guy it mm -hmm. makes no sense to me if i have a problem with a black man am i going to show up and be like yo i'm black oh yeah 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 totally like make sense of that to me that's the foundation of what richard spencer says he says i'm founded my foundation starts at identity politics that's the foundation of what jared Om harvey says his foundation is in being white. Is this not basing something on appearance that one did not have to merit? Therefore, white privilege is based on absolute laziness on and not wanting to be accountable for merit. Is it not self-defeating also by saying that, basically admitting that your other traits aren't don't hold enough, enough merit for you to warrant anything else, your, your character on anything else. We shouldn't warrant your worth based on anything else other than your white. That's the identity you're signing up for, my friend. Or, excuse me, you can please tell me a way that you can counter that, what I have just said. Well, well, um, well first, um, that, that's interesting you mentioned that the, the Daily Stormer crowd, they basically LARP as Nazis. And, you know, you're right, it is a victimhood. They, they think by resurrecting the past, it's somehow going to be like Star Wars, um, the stormtroopers, right? In Star Wars Seven, they're, oh, they're the their back is now these new Nazis, and they're just reforming. You know, it's this weird. Um, well, there's this weird faction too on this um, left wing. I think his name is Zertzi, Zatzi, Zad. I can never pronounce his goddamn name. It begins with X. But um, he wants to resurrect communism, and he basically plays with the little Stalinist and. Um, Leninist thing, you know, and so, um, you know, there's this weird LARPing thing going on. We live in a very LARPy area. If you look at street action today, from base stick men to some of these anti fun they wear shields and hats and they look like some kind of um, anime cosplay event. And um, it's, it's a very weird thing. Now, um, as you were saying about the whole um, identities between, well, you're white, you're white, there's still this conflict. It seems to be that there is this Western tradition of white people acting themselves as individuals, that supposedly their collective nature is often harmed because they think of themselves as hostile individuals. But at other times, they can be um, collective because they're a certain group of, I guess, religion. And... Um, 
that happens mostly that race is a very tricky subject. And I think, um, there, yeah, I, I do have problems too with Richard Spencer's ideal of this. It's, but he's really just trying to say that, uh, race is real. I think of it. And, but there is this weird right wing social justice warrior thing you're talking about. And, uh, that worries me too. His speech at Auburn, he really came out. I was joking. He literally came out as like a Hitler with this dark cloud stuff. And I thought it was funny because of like, oh boy, it's almost as if his postmodern uh, heel gate thing, he's, he's turning its head and almost joking. And yet that's, the media doesn't like that. Once you say something Hitler, Nazi, whatever, you're on the, you're on the shit list forever. But um, I guess to answer your, your question about um, the white identity thing, um, I, I, I look at, I think identity politics is interesting is because we live in a society all the academics you are being taught in the English department of academia through the 80s and 90s were all about the ideal that your life matters, that you have a liberty, freedom, and that identity is above all everything else. This is just an extension of their flawed um, programs. It's, it's, it's a curation. So I joke, I joke and say Richard Spencer is really talking the uh, French deconstruction language and basically using it in a right-wing terminology. The alt-right is fourth-wave deconstruction. That's what it is. It's basically, the deconstruction is imploding on itself. Donald Trump has won the election. It shows you the deconstructions are wrong. There's nothing sinister behind the text because um, everything, you know, all of it is going against it. So there's something fraudulently wrong with this tradition in the modernist era about art and about that okay if the good life is really living out uh, uh, a freedom that you're an individual do what you want it seems that it, it, it harms other people's uh freedom and so i'm really trying to address is this whole recovery plan this this plan b now if richard spencer gets more popular and the medium then the, the liberal media fails and whatnot you know we have donald trump for office so i think i'm just preparing myself to a new school of thought that basically is thinking ahead, as well as being a clever avant-garde artist. I really do not know what to say about the whole uh, white identity thing. Uh, I don't know if I really associate um, being someone. I do like the ideal of being unapologetic, as you said before, but um, I don't know. Again, I call myself an Asian Aryan, so yeah. Pilita, first off, to say you're unapologetic for being mostly European, is kind of like oxymoronical. <laughs> you had no choice in that matter. I don't know. That's like me being saying I'm unapologetic for being black. I have no choice in the matter. What you can be unapologetic for is to be uninformed and to not base your well, I can't be, I can't be like Bruce Jenner's and I guess, well, I'm going to be a tranny now. I mean, I don't believe in that kind of, uh, oh, well, I'm actually, it turns out I'm actually uh, Japanese. Look at the time. Uh, you know, I think my nature is telling me that I belong to a certain class and a certain racial background. And uh, I have a, but I also have feelings and I also have emotions. Hold on. Hold on. You just said your nature is telling you that? My friend, you just finished telling me how the universities have been uh, peddling out they have propaganda to the students. Now. It is the culture that is telling you that. Do you really think that you're born that way? Because how come the children in daycare can play amongst each other and be of different um, races and they get along perfectly? Hmm. I mean, if yeah. The white, that's, that's if you were raised it. around all uh, Chinese people, like let's be let's be real for a second here, man. You're still exploring in life. You haven't really. You yeah. read a lot, and that's good. I'm glad you're well read. But what you have to start doing as well is start calculating what is what actually makes sense and what doesn't make sense. Because we should know first off, the whole thing about identity is cowardly. If you have to, be, it's lazy. It's privilege, and privilege of the very uh, notion of privilege is based in laziness, and it also births exploitation, tyranny, treachery. But Let's focus right now on um, you talking about um, this identity thing. It's there's no merit to any of it. Why should one receive merit, receive value, receive adoration, receive um, any kind of goodwill simply based on an appearance? Mm. That is the reason why we have the, the, the society we, we do. 
of people basing everything on appearance. Yeah. Our whole society is based on appearance. I'm totally a. I'm totally down for. Um, it's funny because um, there's this talk about you know egalitarianism and about and I do believe in racial harmony. I am a, I am pro proponent of that. And um, we you know and we talk about one thing about privilege and this and that. And um, look, I find it very fascinating today. I think the problem today is that a white majority are full of themselves. The white liberal majorities are full of themselves. The best book to learn about that is Christian Lander's stuff. White people like. Because one thing for another, when we talk about privilege theory, whites will be like, oh, yes, I'm privileged, uh, blah, 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 I'll do all this stuff. They really don't mean it because whites have a pathological altruistic drive and basically do it to shut other people up and so they can go do their own perversions. The same way whites do it when they choose Asian women. The multicultural and diverse paradigm, what does this happen is as much as we like to believe you have a choice between black women, Mexican women, whatever, Asian women, whites have chosen the model minority and they selfishly chosen Asian women in Asian culture because it's the best non-white candidate. All the other things, they just play games. Uh, the Right Stuff Thought Biz has an article called Mulatto Futurism. I totally forget the author. I should, I've been citing this all the time now. And uh, this article, he basically argues that this mulatto futurism, this black-white Oreo character, you see so much in the TV ads, commercials, the new American who's this new black man with some white blood or a black person who acts white, it's basically programmed by white liberals and Ashkenazi liberal Jews because they think that that is the only way to soften the black race relations. You just whitewash them. But nobody is really starting a patriarchal Oreo society. It's, it's just program engineered. Now, unlike Asian Arianism, my joke with him was basically that um, Asian Arianism is happening because whites are willing to have sex with Asian women, have your Asian kids, and have these kids of communities going, well, you see, I'm actually diverse and racial. My wife's Asian. But, you know, it, it's this weird thing. It's, it's, it's a problem. Like, we're both talking about privilege. I'm just pointing out these other whites who uh, basically will lie to you and say all this and this to make you feel good, when the fact of the matter is they're being cowards and they're, they're doing something else. It's um, the same way Jim Goode writes in the Redneck Manifesto, where basically there is a uh, white liberals hate the wrong kind of white people, mainly white middle class and lower, is because they don't have any aristocracy. It reminds them they could be natural. There's this weird white civil war going on. It starts with white politics because to change the white people's minds, you, you know, you change the world and that you've changed that ideal and things could be more in harmony. Um, I really, I mean, I, I, all I could say really is it's like Rudyard Kipling's The White Man's Burden. The question is, is it a goal for white people to colonize the whole world and make everything white? Or should white people just leave everyone alone they have their own white ethno-state country. They build stuff. They go to Mars and let everyone be harmonious and free. I didn't think no one has answered Rudyard Kipling's The White Man's Burden, The White Man's Question. Hold and so, on. Hold on. what we're talking about. Hold on. That's, um, man, the very fact that there is a discussion on that shows political pathy there. That's not, a, that's not intellectual. <laughs> That's not a, a, an intellectual suggestion or question. It's not even a, 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 a it's, it's, is that a paradox? Like the very fact that that's considered as a paradox or some kind of wrestling thought shows me the level of psychopathy of if, if someone was like that in society, we'd lock them up and say, put, give them a thousand years. They would live in Ohio and burying people in the backyard like next to the police station in the back like it th that's what i mean like it's like everyone is so caught up no no one realizes what's happening it's it's a beautiful system why don't we ever go to the root cause of the problem we're so worried about the details why aren't we watching the 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 pattern of behavior over hit over a period of time starting with uh greece and so on and so forth. Or maybe even before that, we could go with Egyptians, uh, the Babylonians, because to me, I'm seeing the same thing. I am Socrates in, in Athens of today. It's the same, um, it's the same machinations in society going on, the same beliefs and the very same system that he railed against in democracy.
you're talking about liberals, white conservatives. Like there's a real difference. My friend, the Old Testament and the New Testament are what? Two parts of the same book. <laughs> I mean, if you want to get religious on that, I mean, I don't, I, I that's, that's being religious. So I, I don't know. Oh yeah. And, 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 hold on. Let me just murder religion real quick. Um, I thought we're supposed to, I thought the whole Jesus thing was to free us from the Old Testament. Yet constantly when it's time to tithe, pastors love to go to the Old Testament to tell you about stuff. They love to go to the evil of the Old Testament. Um, the, the Bible, another tool of control in capitalism. It encourages you to take a, take a promised land because God promised it to you. It encourages providence, which is what I noticed most European-minded people love. They love to be ruled someone above them that tells them that yes they're from a divine line that's the reason why you have patents that's the reason why you have um inheritance that's the reason why you have kings the whole bible's filled with them mm -hmm. uh, that's the reason why instead of saying a group of animals and just naming them specifically we've decided to give it a hierarchy called the animal kingdom Europeans are fascinated or are being programmed and conditioned to need hierarchy in life. They need to be um, tyrants to rule them. Is this not why it within the Constitution out loud, why the forefathers made mention of tyrants, but were being absolutely sarcastic because they know that human beings are like a, uh, are like a domesticated animal? It's like the elephant, once you take its chain off, they're not going anywhere. I mean, my friend, I need someone that can meet my level, that's up to the level where I see society. I'm like Neo in the Matrix. <laughs> I see it for what it is. I don't, I, I don't look at it like I'm black. I don't look at it like I'm white. And that's the reason why you're confused. Because trust me, you have, you, you have such a brain that if you just took the time to unscramble what's going on, it would be easy to see the answers, but you have to, you're fighting through this thing called identity that you keep talking about nature's making you do. When no, I've just proven to you, no, then why aren't school kids, daycare kids? If that was the case, then no one would get along. No race of people could live together. They wouldn't get along if racism was inherent. That's all I'm saying. I mean, some people, yeah, I mean, like you just said, there are some race realists that will even go as argue. I think I read some things that race realists will even say, well, it turns out uh, babies don't get along. And actually, babies are innately racist. But from your point of view, <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. I'm serious. And it's really strange. I came across stuff like that. But then again, Jared Taylor could say multicultural diversity is a source of uh, tension and conflict. And if that is an ultimate truth, then you have to base reality to that. But again, we are very optimistic people and believe that they are um, more to things in life. And we believe that there's a human condition that is universal and calm. But a lot of this is just foolery. And uh, I tend to look at things below the surface and say that, okay, what really is happening is that this group is being manipulated by that group. And it's kind of like a delusion kind of the way how the health market has manipulated everything and everything is this, uh, basically this consumer world of you can't escape anything. You just basically are a victim of your own. Um, and so um, I okay. guess what I have to say about race is that it really is, um, everyone's different. Everyone has their own thing. But if you're cool with me, I'm cool with you. I mean, everyone has their own thought. But like, everyone wants their own liberty too, right? You go on someone's lawn. I mean, this sounds very libertarian. Somebody's no, there cannot be freedom to be stupidity. That's the reason why you didn't agree with me about there being stupid people in society. I you want freedom of stupidity, and you want stupidity to have you want stupidity to have some kind of um, influence in society. You're one of those people. No, I do not believe in um, everyone has freedom of beliefs. There needs to be yeah. free belief in truth. Everyone else needs to go. If everyone else chooses to be non-human, subcerebral, because tell me what makes us human, my friend. What separates us? from the animals. What separates supposedly white man above the black man? Isn't it because supposedly the white man has superior thinking? Isn't it because supposedly the human beings are smarter than the animals? So no, everyone is not allowed to believe whatever they want to believe. So they can yeah, just I say the, the rest of us go with it. 
we, you know, there's this whole popular belief of libertarianism and there's a lot of YouTube people on the internet that say libertarianism, it's, it's great. Or an, anarcho-capitalism, that seems to be the greatest thing. But we're talking about this divide between those who, um, it seems to be, it's not a divide between left wing, right wing, or this type or that type. It seems to be a divide between those who want to be left alone and those who just want to bother other people to tell them about a new vision of life. And I, I always think that's kind of a common thing. But again, um, we could be talking about civilization and we could be talking about a normal condition, about existence. And um, All right. I find that it's a battle between. Let me shoot on Jared Taylor real quick because this is why what, what I'm saying. This is why I'm about to show you why I, for a man who reads so much, I'm, I'm so weirded out by your beliefs. Jared Taylor says that multiculturalism does not work. It's 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 anti-civilization, right? It's it causes chaos. It causes turmoil. It yes. causes all the problems, right? That's what he's saying, right? Yeah, yeah, I get. Yeah, he says that all the time. Right? Okay, well, get the, well. This is my thing. Explain Europe prior to white people ever meeting uh, black people on the historical record. Explain the thousand years of, of writing nothing but literature on religious on religion. Explain the thousand years of just um, painting arts of nothing but religion. Then follow that by explaining me the Spanish Inquisition as well as the. Uh, the Protestant, um, the Protestant and uh, Catholic problem with the Thirty Years' War, where they fought and killed each other for thirty years, based on something that's not even real. I mean, no one can prove Jesus. No one, can, no one, can, no one can prove Jesus. No one can prove Jesus. Can you prove Jesus? Because I can prove me. I can't, I can't prove Jesus. I can't. All right. Right, but they fought about this for 30 years. Do you know how long 30 years is, my friend? That's older than you. <laughs> yeah. All over that, who's right about Jesus? For 30 years, and you know what it took them to stop? A contract that said, let's not fight over religion again. That's the reason why I, I seek to challenge anyone that claims that the white man is so superior in thinking. I've looked over history. I see a trail of stupidity. I mean, everyone has their own security claims. I mean, there's a whole group of, I mean, I oh, think. By the way, hold on, before you start up again real quick, my friend, how, what's your, what's this white, um, let, let, let's give you this white utopia where everywhere turns white. Everywhere is white, there's no other races. How did that work with capitalism? Doesn't <laughs> someone have to be the enemy? Doesn't someone have to get exploited? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a very. Someone, do you think white people are going to be loving and kind then? Like. This is stupid. That is the point here. It, it's an introverted white people thing. You're going to have to ask them. I mean, once again, I'm not. No, my friend. Not, you're, right? one of the, you're one of the people that believe in this. You're one of the people no, that no. forward it. So no, no, I'm no, here no, to I question. I believe, in, I, I, I believe in the death of postmodernism and ethno-nationalism and red pilling is the truth. And I believe that is the straightforward. I have my own priorities to look after. And again, we could be talking about libertarianism and an anarcho-capitalism, but I'm not. I'm not a fan of those beliefs. I believe in the classical anarchist ideal of just everyone has their own little communities and everyone does their thing. If you're my friend, I, you're you're a good friend to me. You know, everyone shakes their hands. But I believe in the natural world too. I believe in health. I believe in that we're run by nature, and that um, you know, if I, if I had one thing, I always tell my friends. This might sound a little sci-fi. If we wanted to fix the MGTOW problem a lot of this bullshit feminism going around. The first thing what we do is we practice arranged marriage in the Western world. Basically at the age of um, early 20s or something, uh, you get someone and wed them off at an early age is because it takes all their sexual activity into a wife and the wife becomes loyal and you have many kids with that uh, partnership. You don't have to be free and look for your own wife, right? A lot of sexual conflict and problems in the western world could be solved through arranged marriage but that's just me being facetious i don't that's i don't know if that's uh, really right at all but i think that um the monogamy i i'm subscribing to f roger devlin's philosophy about all the sexual politics of the world i i think um this book right here i didn't have time to show it but uh f roger devlin sexual utopian power I subscribe to this philosophy about our problems in sexuality and about the nature of sexual politics. So, yeah. Okay.
um, let's let's break down the next group uh, of minorities. Let's call it, or no, let's just call it the next oppressed group done by white males. Um, women. I noticed that you 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 made an observation of Aryans taking the easy way out when it comes to mates, romantic relationships by going to by gravitating towards the more passively culturized Asian women, but then you have all these gripes against feminists, particularly their own race. You say, all right, but let me let's let's unpack this one. What on earth problem can men have with women at this point right now because of alimony and uh, child support? Let's talk about one gender of beings dominating another member of their same species simply based on gender. Simply based on that. No, no other reason do we have to oppress women other than the fact that they have a different gender than us. If we remove gender, they're simply, we're both just human beings. But for some reason, once gender has been attached to it, they instantly become, um, let's say, sub male, subhuman, sub us for some reason. That's when we gain privilege. And a man doesn't have to do anything to gain this power. All he has to do is just be born with a penis. You see, it's kind of like the white privilege thing. This one is called gender privilege. It's I'm a male, so I happen to notice I have it. Um, um, words such as we, we oppress them with the language with words such as manual, um, uh, human, uh, referring to the, the whole entire group by the gender of man. This is all the stuff that we mark as is intelligent done by the rulers of society, by the way. I Which used to why I say it's a trail of 14 years old. Infinity. You know, he's old, oh, there's a man in the world, but this, that shit doesn't bother me now. I mean, it's just a designated old school Latin thing to say. I mean, if you really want to be Bruce Jenner's, and if you really think you're some cross dressing anime character that has sex with other girly men, then go ahead. I think that's, uh, you just got to make your own queer culture about that. I'm not saying, you know, no, I'm not. But, um, no, I don't want to go into them. I don't want to, I don't want to go into broach that subject right now because I really haven't given thought to that. But in terms of just women, period, I just look at women as a group that's been oppressed just like blacks. Um, and it's been unfair. Men speak against women all the time, speak against feminists all the time. But the whole concept of masculinity is based on a concept. It, it is a construct. It is not a, it's an artificial construct. I do not need a cultural code or template to tell me how to have a male genitalia. I already have, I've been, I've been given by nature um, innately this genitalia. I don't need then to further on have society tell me instructions how I need to be in being a person with that gen said genitalia. That makes absolutely no sense. And that's the point of masculinity. It is the very concept means women to surrender their natural rights to live as free human beings. Well, because so, I am not a fan. I am not a fan of individualism. I think individualism is pretty much uh, disgusting, even though ironically, it's like, wait a second, you practice an Asian Aryan individual. Well, what is that supposed to mean? I'm talking about individuals in a massive scale. It's but there's something strange. I think whites have this nature of being individuals according to every other race which are collective and about the race and whites seem to be have a history of being individualistic and constantly going against the tribe and they think it's a benefit to tell the world to be whitewashed individuals it's a, it's a very strange thing i mean um for the gender thing i really fucking hate it when white girls act like white men i fucking hate it I fucking hate it. I don't find anything desirable when white women try to act like me. And yet there's a whole sexuality based upon that politics. It's really strange. Uh, you know, I would prefer Asian women is simply if white girls acted like Asian girls, I think they would make good wives because they know how to start a family. They know what's right. They don't 
care because they, they want to be fucking sarcastic and ironic and listen to postmodern shit. I don't like that. That is not an attractive value. So white people have changed their strange sexuality to this stuff white people like thing, which I find is completely disturbing. It goes against nature and it goes against the ideal of starting a family. It has to be, well, I don't like this guy because his hair is brown. It's based upon frivolous uh, decisions like that. I think... Um, okay. Once again, man, this is why I'm confused. You say it's white people that have, done, that have done these things. And yes, because we've proven that the Western powers do dominate the world. So my problem, once again, is then why would you identify with um, groups that are uh, um, rooted in identity politics to in a, in a confrontation or a conflict with a uh, member of your, your same race? It is like flying, it's like one group having a white flag and the opposing group having a white flag. There is no difference. Uh, I mean, again, I think Asian narrativism is a completely contradictory thing because one, it not only ticks off people on the right, it not only ticks off people on the left, it ticks off people on the right. Because one, you're race mixing with another tribe outside of your race. And uh, another thing is you don't subscribe to the liberal agenda. You do what you want. Okay. You stay well, that's, that's still not answering my question as to why white people confront each other based in race of their own self, using their own, by saying, oh, my politics is based in being white. If you're white. Uh, yeah, they're probably because there's, there's a lot of white people that do that because the truth of it is they want to prefer to be people like themselves. It's the shoe allegory. The shoe allegory states that if you're in shoes not fit like to yourself, it's not right for you. And so people are going to be fitting in shoes they prefer. So when white people start acting and saying, I'm proud to be white or I prefer to be white people around this, it's just because this is what their natural uh, inclination is towards. They understand. Um, hold on, I'm going to stop you there, man. Once again, that's culture telling one this. These are ideas that someone has put in your head. You have not actually reasoned those out. I mean, can you prove that human nature says that white people want to be around? So let's put babies around just a room full of black babies. I wonder if that white baby is going to panic or if that white baby is going to play with the other kids. I don't know. Times Magazine once said that white babies were racist. There we go. Sure. Another person putting another idea in your head. Is there anything that you've actually thought of? Is it, that's, that's amazing, right? Is, is there anything that you've actually thought of, my friend, other than Aryan Aryanism, which is someone else's concept that you piece together? Because as you stated already, white men have been dating Asian women at least since World War II. So to say the alt-right or the last 20 years specifically, like there's been a uptick in statistics of I this? Think, um, yeah, I think Donald Keene has said this before. And um, I think there is this strange white Asian unity um, uh, that, that's being formed. I mean, the Gavin McGuine shows when the R.A. Rugman, the, the white, you know, rapper who thinks he's black, accuses Jared Taylor saying, you whites and Asians are suppressing all the other colored people on the world. That is interesting. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You just said the white rapper who thinks he's black. Aren't yeah. you the Quint Cortez that thinks he's all white? You know, I don't know the R.A. Rugmans, but I can tell you Do from you the see fact. how confused you are? You're like, you're basically making fun of people for being you. You're making, you're, you're, you're settling all your arguments with things that other people have said. Nothing that you've actually thought out yourself. Because once again, I ask you, why a white person would walk up to another white person and say, I have a problem with you and I'm white. And I'm basing my argument based on the fact that I'm white. A lot of white people. It, it, hold on, hold on. Before you finish. are petty like that. Your, your answer to me is. Hold on, your answer to me is it's because people want to be around other people of their color and they want to be like other people of their color. But if you have a problem with someone that is of your own color, then how is that you trying to be like them? It is a conflict. A conflict is not two people trying to reconcile. I mean, we could be talking about the Vulcan Star Trek, everybody gets along and does this, and uh, supposedly... No, what I, no, no, no. What I, I'm, I'm going to get specific with you, because you seem to be wanting to dance around the question, because you really have no answer to that. That is what you really need to say, but you, you're too ashamed to say it. Let me tell you why. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. 
I, I really no. It's not that I don't have an answer. It's just that mm -hmm. it's just like no, no. Hold on, my friend. And before you say, I really don't because listen, every racial group, which has been many since the KKK, starts out with their basing their politics on white, pro basing their pro on white identity. But my problem is, if the society that you have an issue with is run by whites, do I need to finish this question? I don't understand. What, what, I mean, I, can't, why I know I'm the smartest man on the planet. Why I do I have to finish that question? You're smart. You're, you're saying something incredibly smart. And um, look, in, if you look at the 1960s, it was completely 90 for five percent whites. But isn't it ironic that the baby boomers created the globalized world we know today? Isn't it odd that there were baby boomers that are basically self-suicidal and hated other white people? And it's also and true. And what I'm telling you is that even the younger generation of whites, they're going to do the same thing the next generation of whites even if you guys got your own country all to yourself guess what you would do to each other it's been proven already in history i mean we you could mean be talking about the balkans and about the um up in you know european so but it's once again it's a different breed you of like to read read michelle foucault my friend read <laughs> michelle foucault you like to read read michelle foucault yeah, yeah i have a couple of i have discipline and punishment and history of sexual i have them in my library so and and, and the one of power power and how blacks play a role in the society remember what lincoln said society needs an enemy that's the reason why there was the civil war because whites had no enemy the country had no enemy so guess what blacks play the, the role that blacks play in society other than it, for economic reasons because it's not cultural culture is not inherent culture is a template of instructions that are given to people that live in a population that is what it is. That's the reason why you said white guy who acts black. What the heck is acting black and acting white? Things that concepts that people have told you to be like. You I mean, really I, think I eat chicken and like watermelon, dude? Everybody be a universally egalitarian human being. I mean, we can believe in the one thing we could be like, and believe the Christian being, but there's another thing where it's like, well, you know, I'm an Asian Aryan. You're that. You're this, and I can shake hands and go, "What up, my brother?" Right, and do that to you. But it's, it's this strange thing that doesn't really, I mean, how is, people are, there's difference among people. And it's really hard to have, there's going to be conflict and struggle wherever you go. So it's so. Um, Human beings are 99.9% .9 genetically the same. So what differences are we talking about? We're talking about 0.1% difference, my friend. 0.1% of something is how much? If I took 1.1% of your $100, how much would you have left? How much would that hurt you? in value come on man that's what we're basing society on appearance first of all which is why nothing is substantial everything's all hype and another based on 0.1 percent that one did not even merit themselves nature bestowed it upon you come on man this this sounds like laziness and need to exploit and be treacherous and being lackadaisical intellectually to me we have to take the time to think okay. like we cannot just attack women all the time and feminists just because it's the popular thing to do something being popular does not render it true something being how i want it to be does not make it true we have why why are women trying to stand up for their rights why, why is that question not asked because men have have been um oppressing them since the days of aristotle like that's right in Aristotle's writings. You're a reader. Yeah, I guess. Um, hold on, I'm just I'm just trying to find something. But, um, sorry, hold on. No, like that's what I'm saying, man. Why is there? Why are those? Why is it always white privilege? How come I never hear these groups say white merit? Why do I, Why do they always need privilege? Isn't that welfare in a way? Um, I mean, like, we're talking about man. women. What about let's hear it for violence towards women, the famous article by Jim Goad where he openly advocates violence towards women. This was the article that basically cost him, uh, you know, offense towards answer me. But it's a pretty good argument in having violence towards women, and uh, I don't know what you would say about that. But look, stuff as the uh, counter arguments have been written since the time of whatever. Hold on. For the whole why would we, of, um, yeah, why would we want to advocate, why would we commit violence on women? That's what I want to know. First of oh, all, this is almost that. like, why would we dominate the world to make it all right? I go on the show. Uh, it's on my podcast. I, I was talking to him from Camming, but uh, you're going to have to ask him. Maybe you should do, uh, should get out and get Axum TV for uh, Jim Goat. I'd love to hear that. Um, no, no. You know what I want, my friend? You have access 
to these people. Now you know how I think. You tell them there's a new sheriff in town. You tell them if they're brave enough to meet me. Hey, yeah. That's how serious totally. I am. No, no, that totally. is how serious I am. I don't care if it's a field. No, physicist, my friend, anyone who thinks themselves a scholar or a thinker, tell them there's a new sheriff in town. But and I don't, and I work. Mr. Pro, he's on Twitter for free. Like, I will. Hey, they I'm can defend their beliefs. Podcast. I'll pay them. Just no, talk to them. And if you get, I mean, just go ahead and get up to them. They'll be able to talk anytime. Same way you went up to me. So I'm just saying. I mean, I don't know. It's just not. You, know it's not what? you were brave. It's you were not, brave. They're different. They got a lot to lose. No, no, Jim. They got a whole bunch of people that follow them. Jim's a brave guy. I mean, you just go up them. He'll he'll go up and talk anytime. I swear. I mean, but not like the guy out there. Spencer, he's gonna be like, he's gonna think about it, and you know, he's on CNN. And it's just like he'll get to you in two weeks. But I don't. That's know. what it is. Yeah, these guys are huge. I need a guy who's actually going to like say, all right, you know what? My argument is like Michael Jordan. That's what it is. If you think you're good, you don't worry about for the million dollars now nah, kobe gets out there and he does the one-on-one -on -one and proves why he's the best and that's what i'm doing i don't need the money i don't need the fame i just want to show everyone that everything they believe they cannot prove it they cannot base it in fact yet i can all right what what's I mean, the problem I, mean, I, I i can't i'm not once again i'm not a logics guy and never went to school for logic and what you're talking about seems to be logic and um most isn't that what the world should be based in though how can I say each word? Logic. How can I perform each act through logic? How can I breathe through logic? Shouldn't the rest of the world be coherent with this? I mean, I, I'm just, look, I'm a simple-minded person. I believe in authenticity and living within one with what makes a good life. And it doesn't, you might say, oh, well, it's going to cause conflict and racial hatred. That's like, not really. Because it's just like, I'm just saying things. You're right. You could be saying things. Um, hold on, hold on. No, 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 no. People are very gullible. That's human nature 101. And second, people are first, they're primar primarily more emotional than they are sentient, meaning intelligent. So to say that what you're saying isn't hurting anyone, you have 300 something followers that you influence. Those are 300 something minds. It's not, it's not a lot. They're taken in your content. Blair White has 200,000 followers. And he's a, you know, you ever listen to Blair White? Tranny. No, he's next. All right. Yeah, I'm totally. He's you. next. Put him. Put, you can tell go. him I'm coming too. Tell him I'm coming too, because I I, I want to eat each Shoot. one alive one by one, and I I want your help in this, man. All right. I'll, tell I'll, I'll reach out. I mean, I'll make I'll, it like an an event. We I'll, can make I'll it like a boxing him. match. Okay. In this corner, we have the one man think tank, and in this corner, we have everyone claims that they're a thinker. I mean, I I'll. Pass the word, but I, I once again, all you have to do is everyone's pretty friendly on there. You just send a message and it'll get on. Just give it a two a day or two. All right, I'll give it a try. <laughs> but uh, I re really enjoyed this pill eater. Yeah. Um, I hope that you go on to continue uh, evolving in your thought because being stubborn and is being frozen. And like Bruce Lee said, water flows, my friend. But again, if anyone's still watching, please, www.asianarianism.com. I have a book, Trip. You can find it on the website. Uh, my YouTube, youtube.com slash uh, uh, pill eater. And Twitter, twitter.com slash real pill eater. Those are my networks. Just go asianarianism.com. What can I say? You got two books written and talking about you're simple-minded. You're writing simple. Simple minded stuff, but you, you're not simple minded. You're a writer. I mean, I guess, yeah, I think <laughs> you want me to think in logic. I don't have all the answers you're looking for. I'm not God or anything. I'm just doing what I love to do. And I agree with other people who do things. So it's not like you go up and say, Sir, why are you a pedophile? And you rape little sure. kids. What's your, and he's not going to provide like some Socrates answer to that. No, he's going to give you a basic, uh, not even mind blowing answer to that. Hold on. You're not God. Yet you gravitate towards ideologies that openly spew that they are the superior race. Then, my friend, no, no, I not. expect you to start doing superior things. Hey, there's some people that believe in superior things, but I don't. I don't really like. Um, why would you gravitate to those groups? Things. You didn't gravitate to a group of philosophers. Some people you believe they are God. That yeah. base their base their thing in identity. I mean, some people believe they're God. It's not going to be, oh, it's going to rub off to me and then I'm God. No, it's just like it's some... You just like hanging around those people? Well, it's, it's interesting.
I mean, it's just like, oh, he's a bad or you're a bad guy. I'm not going to hang around with you. I mean, people have different thoughts. So it's just like, you know, how many times has people said to their self, like, oh, I hate people. I just want to shoot up the school. Right. And then if you say that on the internet, you go to jail. And it's just like, I don't know. It's well, this there, thought. Well, you just like got us like flagged. <laughs> no, no, I'm saying that. I'm saying is, I don't I know. I'm people. playing with you, man. I'm playing with you. And it's just like people think that and people think bad thoughts. And then some people say it on the internet and then they either get in trouble or they don't. But most, the a part of free thought is just getting things out of your head and taking the consequences for that, right? The whole troll community, um, Hank Yu. Look at, I had Hank Yu on my YouTube channel. He's a Korean guy who's telling me he thinks he's the master race. I think he's a prankster and all, but he's saying offensive stuff that I wouldn't say. And I'm just letting him do that because it's just like, well, that's his, his act. And that's, he's, he has more subscribers than me. He has more subscribers than me because he's like comedy or shock art and philosophy all at the same time. There's something genuine about him. And so that's what gets attention. It's really what it's about. It's traffic. And but I'm not saying it's a class act. There is authenticity to what he's really saying and some wisdom. That's what I think. That's why I allow Hank you to talk on my channel. There is stupidity and non-thinking going on what he talks about. But I'd like to debate him as well. But uh, thanks. Oh, for no, thanks you don't want to. You're awesome. You don't want to talk on, Hank you, on, no. um, Pill Eater. Uh, check out his site, um, Aryan, excuse me, AsianArianism.com, um, um, Stark Radio. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. Stark totally. Radio. And thanks once again for coming on. Uh, Thank you very much. So. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Have a good one.